our uh, tutorial series where we're creating a multi-user dungeon game using Swift and Neo. And this will be a pretty short episode where we're going to tackle uh, two things. Um, the first one is when, when we build and run the application, um, let me just show you. So we'll log in. Um, the only message we get is from the Telnet client itself. And uh, it only says we're connected, but there, there's nothing else. There's no indication to a user what they can do, where they are, where, really whether they're successful. So what we want to do is we want to show uh, an, a welcome message the moment the player makes a connection. And it's unfortunately not very difficult uh, to do because uh, this is something we can add to the session handler. Uh, this is the first user, uh, uh, user created handler uh, in our pipeline. And while we already have uh, a method here that reacts to data coming in, we can also react to the uh, session being created or the connection being made. So what we will do is we'll create a second function called uh, channel active. And this is a callback that's uh, called when uh, the, uh, the first time the connection is made. Um, so we'll have some text. Um, let's see, we'll use the multiple line a string literal variant so we'll have a welcome text and we'll say welcome to neo swift mud hope you enjoy your stay please use create user username password to begin You can leave by using the close command. Uh, hope you enjoy your stay. Uh, th this should be enough so far. Um, what I also want to do is I want to have this text in green uh, to signal it comes from the server. I'll just quickly reuse this. Uh, green string trick, uh, so where is it, the session handler. So the green string will be our welcome text uh, with the escape characters in front and after it to first set the text to green and then we set it to white. Also we'll add a new line and our uh, greater than indicating a prompt. So the user understands that from there they can start uh, sending data. And now it's just a matter of again making a buffer, an out buffer from a context and a channel, an allocator, and a buffer for a capacity that can hold our green string. And then writing out the uh, string into the buffer and then sending it out. Context, writer flush and our data we'll be sending is, we want to send our out buffer. However, uh, this method requires uh, a new any object and this buffer is of type. Let's see whether it will tell us the type of output buffer of a byte buffer. So we need to wrap it and we can do that using simply wrapping this one into a neo any object and this should be it so let's run it let's see how far we're getting so it's running telnet so we can get the connection message and here is our message welcome to the neo swift mod hope you enjoy your stay create user etc and we can close goodbye 
So that's that's the first one. Uh, the second one uh, will be a little bit more complicated because what I want to do is we're sort of claiming to be storing hashed passwords, but when we're looking at the uh, the the actual JSON file, let's see how if I still have it here somewhere. Uh, and let's see if there's a quick way of finding it. So we need our build folder, and here is our users that json file and when i open it in xcode i can see that the passwords are still plain text which of course is unacceptable um, uh, it's, it's not that difficult to uh, get this to hash password we just first of need to find ourselves a good hashing function and there is there is a good library uh, there's a good uh, shift uh, swift library that uh, contains all sorts of cryptographic and hashing functionality and that's Swift Crypto so we can add it and there's an URL we'll just have to look it up in a bit and we have a version and I think 1.0 is enough let's just get it uh, look it up here so I think it's in within Apple, and yeah, there it is, Swift Crypto, and we can copy the URL, paste it in here, and then we need to look at the versions. Oh, it looks like there's a 2.0 version. Excellent, and we <coughs> it starts downloading it, and then we can add it as a product. Thank you, autocomplete. Um, let's see what it is exactly called. The easiest way to find that is you in the package.swift file. And let's see, it's looking, uh, it's called crypto. So just crypto. And the package is Swift crypto. So that's the, this one is the same as that one and this one we got from the package.swift file. Now look, it already imported it. So how, how do you uh, uh, use this? Well, what, what we basically want to do is the following. The moment we create a user, we'll pass a string, uh, a password in plain text. But when we start saving it, we want to set it as a hashed password. So somewhere we need to uh, convert from uh, a plain text password into a hashed password. So we would have something here like uh, at hashed password equals uh, hash function and then uh, the password coming in. So we need, we, we need uh, a, a function that helps translate between these, uh, these two. Um, let's create a second file for this for these helper functions and so we'll create a new Swift file and let's call it uh, it'll be a hasher that's, that's all it's going to do and what we want here is we need to import crypto and we can use a structure to uh, to to organize everything under um, because that way we don't have to use uh, uh, some form of free function so we'll make a function called hash that takes a string and it outputs a new string so we first need to make sure uh, it translate the uh, string into data and we can do that using string dot data using UTF-8 else uh, fatal. Th this, this should always work. I mean, you should always be able to translate a string into data if it doesn't work. Absolutely no idea what, uh, uh, what goes wrong. So we'll just uh, uh, crash the application in the loudest possible way to, to uh, see this actual uh, issue pop up as soon as possible. So I have a string data and then we need data because 
the hash function uh, let's see if we can do a, f a 512 bits hash no problem takes data instead of a string so we need a string data here so we have a hash and uh, the hash itself is uh, uh, is not directly readable but if we take the description and then it becomes a string again and the string then uh, we can pass back and that's the one we can store in, in our JSON. We're not going to verify them yet, this is just going to hash it. And then what we uh, will do is we'll go back into our user. And let's see, we can do the hashing here. We can also, and it's e perhaps even nicer, is use the initializer for, uh, for the user. Let's create a new initializer that takes uh, takes an ID. Then it takes a username and a password. And I'm I'm actually allowing passing in of uh, the, the, the ID here uh, because we need to set this value but we can't give a default value because otherwise the codable protocol won't work because then you would always get a different user ID and we wa also want to be able to get the UUID from a loaded file so it's a bit, uh, bit tricky so if codable will take this uh, initializer and use uh, to set it to, to uh, some value. Um, however, if you simply call it, we will create one by default. So we'll try and use the ID one. Otherwise, we'll create a new one. We'll take the username and set it to the username. And then the password, we'll take the hashed password. And that will be our hasher dot hash and then uh, we'll take the password plus the username and we're adding the username here as a sort of uh, uh, as a sort of uh, 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 as a sort of salt um, that way you can't use a s generic database of hashed uh, known passwords and compare it to uh, our JSON file using all the passwords if, if you uh, would happen to know that one so this one will now accept the password and uh, and that's it I think we now need to get rid of this uh, uh, this JSON file because it will no well we can still use it no, no no problem no problem I think this should work so let's try and run it building will take a bit longer because we included the cryptographic library and that contains uh, quite a lot of files but most of this build is a uh, one time only. And it's going quite, uh, pretty fast, I think. And of course, everyone lucky enough to have an M1 Mac will probably enjoy even quicker uh, turn of time. So let's connect to our local uh, system and create a new user. Ooh, four, five with password, uh, password. Now we have now have our full five and we now we can inspect this uh, this file let's copy this one create a new uh, we'll cd into this directory and there's a, a users.json and we can look into it and now we see that the hash password uh, contains a complete digest um, well uh, these ones will no longer be able to uh, uh, be used because these are not valued uh, as uh, sha uh, 512 uh, digest but that's an issue for another time I think the best thing to do now is just uh, deleting the uh, shutting down the server deleting the, uh, the users.json and start over so if I log in now yep. 
create user. Close connection. If we now look into the file, we only have the single user and it has a correct uh, digest available. Okay. So that, that's all for now. Uh, we'll start looking into, let me get my outline. Uh, this is a small cleanup. We'll look into sessions and allowing players to log in in the next episode. Thanks for watching and have a good day.